Hello and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. I'm the Gaming Casual. In this episode we are going to take a moment to introduce ourselves and get to know some of the local residents here. Hopefully you guys have been enjoying the series. Welcome, do you have some business? I don't know why that's going so slow. The room on the left is the mayor's room and it sounds like they're having some kind of meeting, I think. The room on your right is the drawing room and it's also Madame Aroma's office. And yep, this is the wife's, or the mayor's wife's room. Are the fins damp lately? He talks about some weird stuff. This guy's uh, Toto the band manager from the Indiegogos, the Zora band that Mikau is part of. And uh, he has to cancel the event because of all the commotions going on in town. So just gonna get him, add him to my notebook. And this is the mayor's wife and she's looking for her son, Cafe, who went missing mysteriously before his wedding. Um, she believes that you are the person that she hired to uh, look into the matter, but obviously you're not. But she seems to trust me enough to give me the mask and basically make it my responsibility to find her son. I think that's kind of, uh, you know, kind of a little irresponsible to put that responsibility on a child, but, you know, who am I to judge, I guess. This is a cafe's diary that I just read there. If you had a chance to read the text there, it's just saying how he was going to go hang out with the boys at the bar and that Andrew is kind of always the last minute kind of person. She's waiting on to get some kind of mask for the wedding ceremony. This is the mayor's office and they're having some issues discussing whether or not they should evacuate the city because of the moon's about to fall. I kind of like to read their text. I would read their text out loud, but since this is post-commentary, I don't think that would be appropriate. I do plan on doing regular commentary in the next, uh, not this next episode, but the episode after that because uh, just sometimes I feel like I'm in the mood to do that. And the mayor is not a very good uh, leader, as you can tell. He doesn't really know what to do, and as soon as they bring up his wife, he seems to be kind of like, oh no, don't talk about my wife. I don't want to think about her. Uh, I mean, if I was the mayor and I had that little secretary <laughs> working in my house, I probably wouldn't want to think about my wife either. Especially the way she looked. I don't know if the mayor's sprite, the mayor character is from Ocarina of Time. A lot of these characters are similar from characters from previous the previous game. This is Andrew. She is, I don't know if she's the owner or if she just works at the Stockpot Inn, but she definitely uh, plays a important, an important role in its... Uh, operations and I just lied to her and told her I had room reservations that I do not have but she gave me a key so I'm trusting enough unfortunately there is a Goron named Link Goro who comes around and tries to get the room reserv reservation and it has been given away and you talk to her with this cafe mask on and she will tell you to meet her at the kitchen at 11:30. If you come around here in the back, you can meet her mother. Uh, she's kind of a senile old lady. She thinks that you're some kid named Tortoise. I don't know what kind of name that is, but apparently that's her grandson, maybe, or just a nickname. Well, she will tell you stories, and you need the All Nights Mask to stay awake through them, otherwise you fall asleep. It is a good way to pass two hours, or maybe go to the next day really quickly if that's what you need to do. Hmm. She is one of the Rosa sisters, one of the ladies that we helped learn that dance to. Normally you can't get into this room, but since I have the room key, I'm able to, and inside is another hundred rupees. 
which will come in handy for when I'm trying to buy the All Knights mask, which costs 500 rupees. And even though this is uh, a five-star hotel, I guess, according to what Tattle just said, um, you know, it's pretty run down. But, I mean, if it gets as much business and is only in in town, where what else are you going to do? I mean, they're booked. And she's just contemplating what she needs to do for her dance. And this guy's telling me not to talk to her because they don't know what the dance should be. I guess that's why you have to teach them the dance. They're obviously uh, a pretty good troupe. They were hired for the carnival events and to be entertainers. But uh, if you go into the mayor's office before... 12 o'clock, or I mean, I think between 10 and 12, uh, one of the Gorman brothers is back there talking to them, and he tells them that, uh, or the mayor and the Zorro guy has to tell him that they have to cancel it because of all the commotion that's going on in the town, and he gets rather upset. These guys tell a pretty funny joke about the kidnapping, but he woke up. You talk to both of them, they both have something different to say. They're quite, uh, you know, funny. I don't really like the noises that they make. It sounds kind of weird. But, you know, those are the sound effects of the time, I guess. So the next place I'm taking you is to the laundry pool. And part of the quest for cafe takes part back here. I'm going to ring the bell and show you him. That's the little guy right there in that little Pikachu looking mask. It's not the Pikachu mask. It's actually the Keaton mask. It's one of the masks I'm actually trying to work towards getting before I return back the clocks in this episode or this game cycle. These are one of the frogs that you talk to with the Garo's mask on. And if you talk to them all, uh, they will go to the mountains when spring arrives. There's one in Southern Swamp, and there's one in Woodfall, and another one in the Water Temple. And I think there's four in total. That's one, two, three, and yeah, four. So if you talk to them all and then go defeat the got mini boss guy from the Snowhead Temple and make spring come to Snowhead... You can get the heart piece from using that mask to conduct the frog choir. Now that we've uh, kind of explored uh, Clock Town a little bit, you got to know the characters a little bit more, a Little, if you had a chance to read their backstories, we are going to head to Kana uh, Graveyard because I want to get um, something from there. And this is the proper way you're supposed to get there, using Epona. As you saw in the previous episodes, I kind of used a, a trick to get over these fences that got me here a little earlier than I was supposed to be. And if you don't get stuck on the walls while you're riding on Epona, you should be able to get here with no problem. You just need to have pretty good speed when you go over those fences. Those bomb shoes still are annoying. You know, they're blowing up all over the place. And that's kind of like a weird kind of creature, right? They're born with bombs on their tails and they're, they live long enough to blow up. It's kind of a weird um, life cycle. I don't know if maybe their bomb dust breeds more of them, but because they seem to spawn really quickly. <laughs> so at night, if you hear at Akana Graveyard, they have these skull children uh, patrolling the grounds. If you talk to them with the Skull Kita's mask, they will confuse you for the captain. And they salute you with the proper, um, you know, stature and address you as sir. And you tell them to open the grave, and they will do so. Under your command. And, uh... They... 
destroy that stone uh, uh, gravestone. That's terrifying. I would not want to be on the receiving end of those claws. The sheer strength it would take to do something like that in that speed is just astonishing. I don't know how Link can survive it when he gets attacked even once. You kill all these bats in here. Uh, there's quite a bit of them. You don't necessarily need to kill the bats to open the door, but it would be hard to open the door without killing them because you need to light these uh, torches that you see in the room on fire. And the only way you can light them on fire is with the fire arrows. And if they're constantly attacking you, it would be kind of hard to do so. But killing these bats doesn't uh, come without a reward, you get a 50 rupees, which, uh, Link seems to like, since Tattle says that my face is beaming when I pick it up. I bet, uh, Link likes the shinies more than I do. He probably knows what it's like to grow up without any rupees in the Kakuri forest. And... There's a knuckle, iron knuckle back here. You kill him. Uh, hopefully you can kill him. Don't, you know, take an ax to the face like I did. I find that my strategy when I fight monsters is I just use my face as my shield and hope for the best. It seems to work out. The bunny hood has given me some issue because you move a lot faster. And I'm trying to Z target that thing and it's just not giving me any use. And of course, I'm trying to kill it with the master technique of jumping and slashing downwards, and it dealt the f finishing blow as, you know, the master swordsman guy at the training center told me it would. And when you do so, you uh, free the soul of this man named, I think his name is Flat, or maybe it's Sharp. Yeah, his name is Flat, and I guess he served the kind of royal family. Uh, it is a little early to get the song. You don't need it right away. I got it because I don't want to have to come back here to get it later. You don't really need it until you go to the Ikana Valley or the Ikana Village. But... I figure, since I'm able to get it now, I might as well. So you just come up there and take a look at the um, tombstone, the graveyard, gravestone. And on it is written the Song of Storms. A familiar tune from Link's past. I like this song. I kind of wonder if uh, Flat is the one who originally wrote the song, even the one that you hear playing in uh, Ocarina of Time, because it never really said who wrote the song. Uh, I know Guru Guru said that you taught the song to him somehow, but uh, I wonder how you would have taught it to him if you didn't learn it until after you talked to him in the future. It's kind of a paradox. Sometimes I wonder if somehow, you know, there was some kind of like other, maybe he was talking some about some other kid that did it and then you just repeated it sooner than what that kid did. Because it didn't ever said it, the name of the kid, it just said some kid sang the song with his ocarina. Could have been anyone. Link's not the only kid with a magic ocarina, magic in, well, instrument. I mean, Saria had a ocarina. Now I'm heading back to uh, Clock Town with Link here. And we're going to go vi play a visit to the mailman. In here, he has a little bit of a mini game that you can do to earn a heart piece. He's running in place, training his mind and body to count to ten exactly. I don't know why you would want to do that, 
but you kind of need to do it for this uh, little mini game. My reflexes are slower than cat shit, so uh, I take a couple tries to do it more than I'd like to admit. But you'll see. And I know what you're thinking. 1025. What is he thinking? Is he on drugs or something? Well, I'll have you know I hadn't taken any drugs today. <laughs> uh, at least not that I'm aware of. I like the sound of the clock. And you can see the clock in the background moving. It's a good little backdrop. One thing about this guy in the Ocarina of Time which really pissed me off is that you can't he has the running man challenge where he tells you to meet him at that bridge in Kakari or Forest or the Lost Woods. And you race him there, and every time he beats you by one second. And when I was a kid, first trying to play Ocarina of Time, I didn't know you couldn't beat him. And so I believe I tried at least 10 or 20 times trying to beat that asshole. And I never could, and then I always felt like I never 100 percent the game because I never beat that guy. That's one of the reasons why I think Ocarina kind of, of Time kind of sucks, in a way, because... Why would they have that in there? I guess they did put it in there so that it can train you to move around the map pretty fast, but why would you need to do that? Uh, I, it made me upset. Not that it was a big deal, but at the time it was just frustrating. You're trying to beat in 100% the game and you can't, or at least you don't think you did. And especially since at the time there was rumors that you could beat him. So, I don't know. I always felt like I never 100% the game. This is a little look at his schedule. Looks like uh, the mayor, his wife, has a little bit more say in the going on in the town than you would like to think since he's afraid of his wife. And the wrath she may incur upon him. So now I'm going to make my way to the Stockpot Inn. And there... I will wait... For Andrew to arrive at 11.30. Oh, this is uh, Link Goro Goro. Yep, he's the one whose room I stole. A Goron. He looks like he traveled far from wherever he was. Turn the song, uh, the time, flow of time back to normal as to keep uh, the time going pretty fast. I don't want to wait forever. But before I do go down to the stock pot in, I take a look over here at the milk bar. This is another area I wanted to show you guys. We are trying to get the membership for this area for this bar so we can come in here when it's actually open right now it's not really open it's just being cleaned by this mario looking character you can't probably remember him from uh ocarina of time talon yeah these guys just look like mario and luigi that other guy's just in a goofy clown costume and this guy's in like a nice kind of like bar tender shirt clothing. I don't know. It's like a formal. This bar is members only, but you know, when I come in here, there's only like two people. I think it's like Madame Aroma and that guy. I don't see any other members with their masks on since you have to wear your cow mask to even order a bar or order a beer, <laughs> order a bar. Well, this episode didn't get a lot done, but I felt like we got quite a bit done because we hadn't really took a chance, moment to look around Clock Town. We were kind of in a rush a lot of the other episodes, and this time I had a, we had to wait anyway, so I figured why not uh, kill some time by looking around and absorb the local um, history. 
And anyways, we'll be waiting for Andrew to come back. And in the next episode, we will deal with that. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, comment if you would, and have a great day.